How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see before me, today Gamdius is being given yet another shot. Today we're taking a look at their Chione E1A 120R, a mouthful of a name for a 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. So we're gonna bring it in close, talk about what comes in the box and some of the little feature things with this uh, all-in-one, and then talk RGB lighting performance and conclusions. All right, we're in close, let's talk about the thing. This is everything that comes included in the box with the with the Chion E1A 120R. My God, please work on the name. Now to start with, uh, this is all of your uh, requisite mounting hardware. I actually have the AM4 socket stuff installed on the block right now, but you do you also have all of the mounting hardware for all of your contemporary Intel sockets, including their HEDT socket. Moving on, uh, I actually want to touch on this piece of kit first. This is their Aeolus Box 2. This is the RGB controller that also acts as a dedicated fan hub for the Aeolus fan that comes with this all-in-one. Now probably the coolest thing about this honestly is the fact that it has these two magnets built into the back of it so as long as the interior of your chassis that you're using is steel, you'll be able to very easily relocate this wherever you want to. And honestly, any company that uses these kind of controller boxes, I want to see more of them with these magnets on the back. The, the double-sided tape and Velcro thing is, is cheap and all, but honestly, I'll pay a buck or two more if I've got these magnets in here so I can just set it and forget it. We do have a... Uh, a uh, plug on the side for removable uh, power cable, which I am pleased to report is SATA. And on either side, we have three fan headers as well as one RGB lighting header for a total of six Aeolus and two LED equipped de uh, devices being controllable on one box. Now, unfortunately, the fans that are used for this are using a proprietary sort of eight pin connector. So unfortunately, that also means this box is the only way for you to actually control the speed of the fan with this all-in-one. And that does also mean that because this lacks PWM sync for your motherboard, you're fixed at a static fan speed. So I really hope you like the performance and acoustics of the one speed you're gonna have up because I can guarantee you, you're not gonna remember to change that every single time. There is this cool daisy chaining feature they have. There's an LED in and out port, which will allow you to link more than one of these Aeolus boxes together. So you, if you decide to go all in with uh, Aeolus fans for your computer, you will be able to have an additional six fans and two uh, RGB LED equipped devices, provided they are, again, compatible with this lineup in your build, all doing the same thing at the same time. And it definitely makes things, uh, be again, because of these magnets on the back, it makes it a lot easier to keep everything sort of neat and organized. So I definitely dig that. Real quick, since I forgot to talk about it conveniently, RGB lighting sync for a motherboard is handled via a detachable cable that hooks into your Aeolus 2 box and has two connectors on it. One of them is a more standard three pin, five volt addressable header, while the other one is slightly different and is designed for gigabyte motherboards that have RGB Fusion 2.0 functionality built into them. So mixed bag with fan and lighting control, but in general, yeah, it's pretty good. Also included in the box is this controller. Uh, this is what you're gonna have to use to control uh, not only the inbuilt uh, uh, lighting effects here, but also to control your fan. Now, as far as the degrees of granularity you get, the fan is supposedly rated from 800 to 1800 RPM. So I'm guessing you have roughly 100 RPM stepping per, uh, per well, step. But because I don't have uh, my tachometer anymore on me anymore i am not able to verify the actual speeds of this fan so we can only sort of estimate here now the same goes for brightness with your rgb lighting effects as well as the speed of the lighting effects for all of the demos that i'll show later on for the lighting i was using the medium speed with the brightest setting although i do have to admit the top speed is like speed metal fast <laughs> and I absolutely love it. All right, now, 
for the main event, we have, of course, the Chion E1A120R. We do have a 120 millimeter adjustable RGB fan equipped to this thing with two rings of adjustable RGB lighting on either side of it. And of course, at each corner, we have some rubber vibration dampers. Not that you'd realistically need them though. Honestly, I mean, this, this fan is not only surprisingly quiet as a fan itself, but the bearing itself is also just extremely smooth. For the radiator, we have a pretty bog standard 120 millimeter by 25 millimeter aluminum rad here. I did unfortunately wind up pretty effortlessly stripping one of the, um, one of the mounting points, this one right here, I believe, during installation. So you're definitely gonna wanna be careful when you're mounting the radiator to the chassis itself. The pump lock itself is nothing super exceptional. We uh, definitely have an all plastic body here with a kind of noticeable uh, difference in texture between the actual pump top and the uh, and the body of the, of the pump right here, but... Eh, in practice, you're not really gonna notice that anyway, and honestly, I really didn't, so. You also get pretty nice articulation for the tubing, so I don't suspect you'll have any issues getting this mounted comfortably in whatever environment you're using it in. For the base plate, we've got this brushed copper affair here. It's got a pretty sizable surface area to it. It's held in place with a bunch of Torx fasteners around the outside, and uh, again, it's, you know, nothing offensive. Pretty, pretty straightforward stuff here. Now brought it up even closer for a second so you could see this. See how I have these uh, mounting screws on the underside of the heat sink with this bracket right here on the front side? This is actually the correct way to mount your mounting hardware to the pump block itself. If you don't mount it like this, you will run into issues where this heatsink will be sitting too high off of your processor and you may experience some really bad temperatures as a result. Now the directions do specify how to mount this and while they're not printed and included in the box, you can easily download them at the bottom of the product splash page. And the astute among you will probably notice that every now and then some of my B-roll has this mounted incorrectly, so read the manual. And coming off the pump block itself is these two cables here. One of them is the uh, proprietary RGB connector that hooks into the Aeolus box so you can control the RGB lighting on the pump top. And the other one is a uh, four pin PWM header that you would plug into either a free PWM or AIO speci uh, specific header on your motherboard. Last but not least is this lovely braided tubing. Uh, it's actually got some really clean heat shrink on uh, on the barbs at either end here, and the braid itself is is actually a really high quality. I, I I'm really a fan aesthetically of how this looks. The thing to bear in mind though, this is not your uh, your more uh, frequently seen rubberized tubing that's on uh, a lot of other AIOs out there. This is kind of a throwback thing. They're using Teflon tubing here. Now, the thing with Teflon is because it's uh, a more rigid material, you're not gonna have that permeation problem over time that you would have with something like uh, one of the Corsair all-in-ones that uses the rubberized hose. But the trade-off is that if you wind up bending this just the wrong way with just the right amount of force, this isn't gonna necessarily kink, it's going to crack. And a crack is more than likely going to be a leak. Now that being said, in my testing with this, I actually noticed that this tubing has a fair amount of flex to it. So unless you're in an extremely crowded small form factor configuration, I honestly don't see even the Teflonness of of this tubing really being uh, a major issue. So yeah, that's the thing. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about here is the RGB lighting, because that's one of the major selling points of this particular all-in-one. Admittedly, some of these settings felt a little bit on the half-baked side. Uh, some of them didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Others, I see what they were trying to do there. And with more components in a system, it may actually look a little bit better. Spoilers, we will get to take a look at that in a future content piece. But in general, the pre-programmed lighting was fine, especially if white is as consistent across all of their Aeolus equipped products as this one is, because I actually really like how the white produces here. Now, unfortunately, I did encounter an issue with motherboard sync here. Unfortunately, this control box does not remember that it is syncing with your motherboard lighting, which means 
every time you do a complete shutdown, and I actually tested this by shutting down my computer, waiting 15 seconds, then turning it back on, I observed that the box doesn't have built-in memory, so it can't remember, oh, I'm syncing with motherboard lighting, not with my own lighting. What it will remember, however, is the last pre-programmed setting that had been applied. So definitely something that I would like to see improved upon with this in the future, because proprietary connectedness aside, this actually isn't a bad implementation. The other thing that I will note with the lighting is two things. One, teal looked really weird. Like there was a, a color shift in some of the RGB lighting and it was consistent on both the fan and the pump top in the same exact spot. So it's telling me something wasn't programmed correctly in the control unit itself. Since when I reproduce that same color via RGB Fusion 2.0, I don't get that problem. The second thing is, and I don't know what issue, probably some solder joint on this isn't 100%, but I did notice, while I didn't catch it on camera, that while using this heatsink as a daily driver for a couple of days, my lighting would flicker a little bit. But that is something to take note of. You may experience that. I have not personally used Gamdia's customer service to address an issue like this, so I really can't speak to how that experience might be for you. So for performance testing, I pit the Chioni E1A 120R here against my Fuma 2 that I use as my daily driver. The reason I did that is because there's actually very similar pricing between these two heat sinks now with the Chion E1A here, airing a little bit more on the spendier side of things. Now, as far as the actual thermal testing results, I don't think anyone expected the Chion to outperform the Fuma 2. Yes, it is an all-in-one liquid CPU cooler, but the fact remains the Fuma 2 just has a lot of mass on that dual tower heatsink, and those 220 millimeter fans do great work at dissipating heat off of, this, off of these fin stacks. Now that being said, the Chion E1A 120R's temperatures were not truly offensive, with an actual peak in my environment of around 84.5C. That may sound high for a Ryzen 7 3700X, but remember, TJ Maxx is typically displayed on these chips at right around 95C, and as I measured in all of my average clock speed testing across all eight cores averaged across my three testing runs, the average clock speed on my 3700X still by and large remained above four gigahertz. And of course, compared to the Fuma 2, we can see that the Fuma 2 was capable of maintaining uh, about two steps worth of higher average clock speed across all of my cores and threads. So I guess all that talk on performance kind of begs the question, where does the Chioni E1A and for that matter, any other 120 millimeter all-in-one, where do they actually make sense? I mean, clearly if you've got the room in your case, and that's the qualifier statement there, if you've got room, you can go with something like a Fuma 2, spend less money on it, get better performance, and anecdotally speaking, because I don't have a proper test environment for it yet, stay tuned, that will be changing shortly. The Fuma 2 honestly was a quieter solution, and it's not because the supplied fan with this all-in-one was particularly loud, it's that the combination of the fan noise with the pump noise made this a louder solution than the Fuma 2 did. But here's the thing though, this can fit in places that even something like this Wraith Prism right here can't fit. As long as you've got a good flow for intake for the fan and a good path for exhaust for the radiator, you can fit this in a really tight spot. I mean, even with, like I said before, even with this being Teflon tubing, I can get a pretty good amount of flex out of this hose before I feel like this is gonna crack. And this honestly is still getting better clearance than something like a Wraith Prism again. But this all assumes that with the restrictions of the rigidity of this hose, that the radiator can reach the, pl the place that you want it to mount the go. Because if you've got to mount the tubing something like this, all of a sudden, that Wraith Prism is looking mighty low profile and a lot more appealing at a lower price point. Even if the performance isn't necessarily there, if the heatsink allows you to use the enclosure you want to use, why would you go with anything else? So I guess to sum it all up, there's nothing 
There's nothing super wrong with the E1A120R. If you're looking for an attractive all-in-one that's only about 120 millimeters in size, you don't wanna to have to worry about permeation of the tubing, uh, you want to be able to just plug everything into a single control hub, set it and forget it, then this really isn't a super terrible heat sink to consider. Just bear in mind that if you have the room for it in your case, you should absolutely go for something like an air cooler instead, because honestly, you're gonna get way better cooling performance and you're gonna get way better noise even at peak levels of operation. But sound off in the comments down below. What do you all think of these, uh, these Chion heat sinks here. Also, have any of you had experience with the newer revision of this heat sink that comes with the revised pump top and fan design? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear about your experiences with it. Also, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on your way out. Click that sub button and the bell icon next to it to make sure you're notified every time I upload a new video. And I'll catch you all next time. So take it easy.